Yeah. Phil's got to like come in on the downbeat, the end on it, not not two not two beats over. Two beats over. Yeah, that's how you always usually play it. I usually play it at one beat over. <laughs> one point five. What are you what are you, Jake, what are you saying? What am I saying? Yeah, what are you talking about? I, didn't I wasn't talking about shit. I thought you were talking about. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Me and uh, Mr. Guitar started the band. Other guys from living in Corvallis. We were living in Eugene at the time, and uh, basically bought our instruments and taught ourselves how to play them. And uh, ever since then, that's been the, sort of the theme of not being able to play our instruments correctly because we kind of just taught ourselves. into the band, uh, Eric E-Rock joined the band. I, I go by the name of E-Rock. Oh well, I went out drinking on a Saturday so they call me. night. And I joined the group in again, I got 95, I, got I think, 95, 96. Um, he was playing in another band called Ten Dollar Mike, a ska band. With Drew, our other singer. So he joined the band, uh, was doing both bands at once, and uh, soon became more of our, more or less our lead singer. And uh, I, then they forced me to, to write all the, the all the tunes. I don't know how to do that. We actually had a couple other members too. Uh, Josh Dolliger was in the band uh, back in the days when we first started off. He was a uh, pretty well-known uh, bass player in the air, and he actually played trombone for it with us for a while, and then he was playing guitar. Um, he was sort of just there to dick around with us, and he just learned the songs while we're playing live usually. But uh, he was he lived with uh, Wedge and KCDH. I think his name was JD Two Gunner because he had a real big dick. <laughs> After Lars or Wedge went down to San Diego, uh, Val Valentine Hellman joined the band. I can't remember what his band name was. I don't think I think he had a band name, did he? <laughs> You suck. <laughs> Who likes swing music? Not me. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this song is about a dog. Oh wait, we can't start yet. We're missing a sax player. Anyone know how to play the tenor? Oh, what are you doing now? I'm serious. Valentine <laughs> Hellman, if you can hear me, please come to the stage. So Val joined the band, then he quit because uh, he was in another band called the W's, Boys Swing Ska Music, and they got real popular uh, on the Jeevas train, going around uh, playing a lot of different churches and stuff like that, and then finally got signed to a major label. So he kind of, he was sort of going in, he was going away anyhow because he didn't want to say, didn't want to sing the songs and cuss words and shit like that. So he was going his way, his way, and we were going our way. Me Thanks. too. I don't like it. Or here. Okay, we're ready. The band was not doing anything for about six months, and then uh, Sunny Slamonian, Slammy. Uh, I'm Sunny or Slam, whichever. I've uh, been in the band for probably about what, two years, two and a half years almost. Uh, started out as bass player when they lost uh, your brother. Drinking, drinking at him with the, bar, the bars for a number of times, he finally said, let's start the band up, and he started playing bass. He was another band called Sexually Frustrated that played around here. Played a lot. Um, it was a surf hardcore band. <laughs> you can imagine that crap. I 
wasn't in Sexually Frustrated Like Ben said Lady Guitar Sexually Frustrated Was probably the crappiest Fucking name In the history of music Sexually Frustrated Lady I was actually in the band Called The Manholes With Ben We uh We took uh, Portland by storm um, Then Mike left Making it down to a Three piece uh, which was pretty cool. We had a lot, a lot more cut down sound. And then one day, without asking, Sonny brought, uh, no, was that we were? I think Eric, yeah, Eric brought in uh, Andrew Monaco. Hi, I'm Drew. I joined the band two years ago and uh, pretty much took the only good thing they had, Mike Bristol, and uh, ruined it. Um, New lead singer. I don't have that much to say about the band because I'll be quitting soon, I'm sure. Either that or they'll kill me. So then a couple months later, um, Sonny brought in Gig Anderdome. I'm Jake, or Big Jake, Gig Anderdome. All right! I joined the band December of 2000, I guess. Player and Sonny switched over to our second guitarist. Oh, I played bass. But it's not like shit. I really need a new one. I'm broke. You can ask all those guys I'm like Mooch. Because I don't want to Jake walks in place mix his uh, painkillers, weed, and booze, the tall boys of PBR. And I don't contribute much. Nobody likes me. I like all them. But I'm still the outsider. So now we're a five piece. We've been that way for almost a couple of years now, I guess. Um, and going nowhere, um, as usual. But we look at it more or less as a, as a you know, somewhat cheap uh, hobby. Uh, they're pretty shitty. So now I'd say he's pretty much rock solid. He pretty much ties the ties the band together. If it weren't, if it weren't for Nelson, I don't know where those guys would be. Remember when I stuck my dick in your butt? <laughs> and you said, ouch. And I said, tough shit, bitch. I'm gonna fuck, the, I'm gonna fuck your asshole so hard. We're blowing up soon. Let's keep keep your dial tuned into the, the MTV and the uh, TRL. Cause uh, talking nasty and playing with hot dogs on stage is soon to become popular. Uh, aspirations in the band, I don't know. Maybe um, maybe actually playing a real gig would be. Maybe stop playing weddings. I think. No effects was great. We played with them. Um, we played with a, a band. I don't know if you've heard of them before. It's called Blink 182. <laughs> um, they're my favorite band of all time. We played with them. That was great. Uh, we went on a little mini tour with them down to California, and we went down and played. In, uh, uh, we played uh, the uh, Gulf of Mexico at Sabo Sabo Can Lucas um, and Tijuana. Um, Can Cancun, Cancun, Mexico. Um, we called it the Los Dos Amigos Duros. <laughs> the show that we played with uh, Death by Coat Tail, Coat Hanger. <laughs> Any show I play with Mike Coons is my favorite.
we can play a song, but we have to shut the door. I'm trying to think of something clever. We're not very stealthy. Yeah. <laughs> clever stuff just slips out of my head like on accident. <laughs> See, we got the trick. We don't have stage presence, but our songs are so short that you don't you don't get bored. Yeah. Because like, cause by the time you realize what's going on, it's a new song. Yeah. It's like, ah. <laughs> Do it. I was sitting in class and uh, we we're watching this video. Uh, I don't know exactly what it was. It was something on like Jack the Ripper. And they were talking about how like how when he like he'd rape people and like they'd get pregnant and like there wasn't any real abortions then, so they'd have to use coat hangers. And I'm sitting there and I'm talking to John Mark and a couple other people, and all of a sudden I'm like, "Death by coat hanger? That'd be a cool name. That's badass." I'm like, "Yeah." Death by Coat Hanger. Then I, I go to John Mark. I'm like, dude, what do you think about Death by Coat Hanger? He's all, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I'm like, all right, let's talk to Mike. And he's all, so we go talk to Mike. Mike crude. So, yeah, that's it. No. If anything, we're if making, anything, it'd be we're yeah, making people be aware, I think, <laughs> aware of the dangers. Yeah, that's <laughs> Started in about January or February. Yeah, it was. It was from Japan. Two thousand one. Yeah, February of two thousand one. Used to be our drummer. You need to interview but, him. <laughs> yeah, you should interview that guy because yeah, it's punk rock. <laughs> so that's why he quit. And this guy came to our rescue. Yeah, we just decided to add a second guitarist and found him in the adult shop. <laughs> He seemed to fit. <laughs> band I ever really that liked was, was Nirvana. That was the first tape I ever owned. I was no, that's not true. Then when that first tape out. I ever owned, my dad bought me L. You know how old I would make Panther? I and it was that. the edited version, too. The first tape I ever got that introduced me to the real music was, uh, uh, was Get a Grip by Aerosmith and uh, Metallica's Black Album. I, was, I had both of those when I was little. And I was like, yeah! <laughs> pretty much brought up on Clash. I was one of my dad's favorite bands, if not the favorite. He got me into a lot of the Clash. Really like. cool. About the Sex Pistols. Yeah, me too. Yeah. He's he's pretty much the first person that introduced me into a lot of the old punk like that, all the UK stuff and the earlier like LA scene. You mean New York? No, like the LA scene because. He managed a band, and he, uh, he lived in Huntington Beach, Orange County, yeah. and they had a band in 78 called The Crowd, and they played with a lot of those bands, so he, like, got me listen to them.
gonna be one of those CKY type videos? No, this is something completely original. So many piles of chocolate. Hurry up, fellas. I need to get my house. I need to fucking get all this shit out of my mouth. My fucking nose. Sick. Chocolate boogers. Where are you going, Brian? I'm gonna throw up after this drink. Andy, I want me puking on the morning announcements. That's right, I can get it on there. I don't control I, the morning announcements. You can put that on there, dude. That's fucking insane. Do it all, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Sam! Oh my god! Yeah. Oh! That's what separates the men from the boys. Oh, that was hardcore. Right back up. It's like SeaWorld, dude. Don't get in the front row. <laughs> Fuck going here, that's rule, but you know, fuck.